Hey, welcome to a special presentation. Uh, it's uh, um looking at an individual who has risen through the ranks of a, a uh, medium-sized business. And he's going to be talking about sales forces. He's going to be talking about advertisement management, uh, marketing, different kinds of areas. Uh, so stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. I'm Patrick Dangle. Uh, I work with the uh, Ohio State University telecast programs as well as the University of Rio Grande. And we always look for different programs that uh, discuss various different business ventures. And it's my fortunate experience to have with us uh, not only a son I, I know and love, but he's also the general manager at Glockner Chevrolet Corporation or Glockner Chevrolet Superstore located in Portsmouth, Ohio. Uh, Nicholas has been working there for 13 years. He is a general manager now. and. In, in essence, he started out as a salesperson. And as a salesperson, it, it's not an easy uh, uh, task to do, but it's not difficult either. Uh, and today we're gonna, gonna talk with Nicholas a little bit about uh, sales force, marketing, advertisement, how to maintain professionalism uh, in in the public view. So welcome, Nicholas. It's good having you here. Well, I appreciate you asking me to be on the show. I was woke up this morning very excited to be here, so I appreciate you asking me to be on the show. So Well, well thank you. And, and I know that uh, you have been working with Glockner's, uh, the superstore down in, in Portsmouth. Tell me a little bit about Glockner's. What, what, what do they do? What do they do? Um, well, they're a big advocate of the side of county, you know, where their businesses have, um, you know, formal relationships with the people there. Um, you know, we sell uh, the General Motors product. Then we have a Honda Toyota store down the street. We also have a Ford store in South Point, Ohio, another General Motors store in Ironton, Ohio, and a Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Ashland, Kentucky. Um, you know, we also have some buy here, pay here, our auto credit stores that do alternate financing for people with um, credit challenges, you know, starting out with very limited credit. Um, you know, but also the Glockner family has done a lot of things for the community. You know, uh, the fair of Sida County was um, just happened, what, about a month ago? Yes. Um, you know, big advocate of the 4 H um, livestock. Uh, kids, um, also in Lawrence County. Um, not to mention, there's several other businesses that the Glockners own. You know, there's the oil company in Pike County, which is just right down the road from here. Um, we also have a insurance company, uh, Rosemount City Insurance, which is on the same campus as I am. Um, then there's the Glockner Finance Company, that does the financing for, you know, commercial loans and things like that, and heavy trucks, you know, semi tractor trailers and business loans for, you know, uh, different individuals, mm. so. It, it sounds like you have a variety of different uh, businesses that you're involved in, but more importantly, behind those businesses are the people. Yes. And, and people, uh, you know as well as I do, come in all different shapes and sizes and, and different needs and different wants, et cetera. Uh, and, and when we sit down and we hire those individuals or we manage those individuals, um, so, sometimes it's, it can be difficult. Uh, well, let's let's start with just the hiring. You know, what what are some qualities that you look for in hiring an individual? Well, first of all, punctuality. You know, are they showing up to the inter interview on time? You know, because if they're not showing up to the interview on time, you know, are they going to be showing up to your workplace on time? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, the next thing, you know, is this individual? You know, you're going to know real quick. Is this individual a team player? You know, are they willing to, you know, help another employee? Are they going to, you know, um, you know, do what's best for the organization mm -hmm. or the team? Um, you well, know. but I, I, you got my curiosity. Isn't salesmen like you against the world? 
yes, it pretty much is you against the world. But if you have a great sales force, sales team, you know, everybody helps each other when everybody's oh, down. Okay. And, okay. you know, well, what that makes sense. I mean, it, it makes your job so much easier when, you know, something happens and, you know, you can't be there and you have someone else to pick up the slack and you know that's where the training part comes into factor oh, because you know if everybody's trains are correct in the same way nobody's going to miss a beat yeah yeah and and i would imagine that you know we we are on our best behavior for instance if i come to you say nicholas i would like to uh to work for you as a salesman i'll, I'll probably be on my best behavior and then after I start feeling comfortable that that you know yeah I, I tend to start slacking off a little bit. Um, we we found that probation periods sort of help us to determine do I have that quality. Correct, correct. At the Glockner organization, we have a six month probation period. You know, um, you know that, that that's about the norm within most organizations because mm -hmm. you know in that six months you're going to find out about yourself. Can I do this job? And then yeah. the company's going to yeah. find out. You know, can, is this individual? Yeah. You know, can do can they do the job as well? And you know. You know, I found out in six months, you know what, I was scared when I started out in the sales, you know, because I was like, oh, wow, commission-based sales, this is going to be difficult. But, you know, you write your own paycheck in commission-based sales, so it's very nice. You know, you can make as much money as possible, and then if you don't want to make as much money as possible, that's not important to you, you can, you know, still have a nice life. You know, so you write your own paycheck. Well, you, you, you were talking a little bit ago about, about the training. Uh, I remember one sales position when I was first starting out on my career, uh, I was in insurance. And they gave me a, a script to follow and said, come back with some sales. <laughs> and, and so I, I found that I was starving at selling. Correct. And, uh, you know, that was not a really good environment. So that it sounds like you have an environment that really supports the salespeople. Correct, correct. But, you know, the salespeople have to do some things on their own, you know, like with the marketing and promoting and advertising on their own. You know, so if people don't know that you are in a sales game or you are selling this product or service, are people going to buy from you? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, you know, th there's a lot of confusion with marketing, advertisement, promotion, publicity, public relations. Uh, you know, help me to, to better understand the difference between let's start with advertising and marketing. Well, with advertising and marketing, you know, what you want to do and what we found in, you know, today's economical world, people want to be advertised to on social media, like your Facebook, your Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, you know, um, you know, anymore now, you know, a lot of people don't look at the newspaper anymore. A lot of people don't watch TV anymore. Um, if it's not... Or the local channels. Correct. Yeah, okay. Correct. Right. And, you know, it's a new form of you know, marketing and advertising. You know, hmm. if people, don't, like I said before, if people don't know that you sell a product or service, are they going to buy from you? No, they're not because they don't know. They may meet you one day and maybe have bought elsewhere, but until they know you and where you work at. You, you know, I was reading a, uh, uh, some statistics um, and, and it was interesting. There are 60 million baby boomers. Mm -hmm. I'm a baby boomer. Correct, you are. There are 55 million millennials. So, and, and we baby boomers came up the hard way with, with computer systems and the internet and, uh, you know, the different forms. Do you find that your, your advertising and your marketing approaches and some of the social media fits our needs? No, it doesn't, you know, because... Um, you know, the marketing and everything like that we're going after are the millennials, and they are extremely difficult to communicate with. Huh. But one of the ways that we have found out that they do like to communicate with is through social media, huh. you know, with Facebook. And, you know, because Facebook is the millennials' TV. How many millennial, millennials do you know that watch a lot of TV? They don't. They hmm. really don't. You know, people want to see, you know, content in context on Facebook. And that's where a lot of our marketing and advertising has been, 
in you know when we have a new salesperson at the store, you know I, I tell them, you know, do videos on Facebook, do videos, mm. you know, take pictures on Instagram, you know, relate with all these people, relate with all your friends. Your friends are going to share this, and then it's it, it, you're going to reach a wide group of people, and that's what you want in marketing and advertising as a large group of people to mm. advertise to. Well, so what what do you do with us baby boomers? You know, we, you know, I, I do have a business Facebook account, and and we we do Twitter sometimes, et cetera. But we're more of the traditional. Correct, correct. I, I you know, we still do, um, you know, internet advertising and things like that. We do a little bit of TV and stuff like that. You know, for our traditional, um, you know, baby boomers, you know, advertising. Um, you know. It, and then with a the traditional baby boomer, boomers, um, you know, they really like word of mouth, and they like the baby boomers are very loyal. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. Once you know you've built that relationship with a baby boomer, yeah, that's they're going to come back, yeah. and the baby boomers are going to still, hey, go to Glockner's or wherever. But you will also see a lot of the baby boomers using the internet, and using that way to purchase something. Mm. You know, i.e., Amazon. No, oh, that's true. That you know, yeah. That you know, how powerful is Amazon? Uh, well, uh, you know, I'll buy a book or two from from Amazon. I don't know if I would buy a car from Amazon. Well, they don't sell cars on Amazon yet, but <laughs> I'm sure it's it's in the, in the I'm possibilities. Sure, I'm yeah. sure it's in the possibilities. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, it's interesting. Fifteen years ago, when Walmart really hit their peak, their zenith. Everyone was, what will ever replace Walmart? And, it, and it's interesting, we go through various different trends. Mm -hmm. and, and Amazon uh, is sort of setting the page, uh, the, the, the way sales are going, and Walmart is following them. Yes. Yes, Walmart is following them. You know, even Kroger is following them. Yeah, yeah. You know, Whole Foods is following them. Well, Amazon bought Whole Foods, so, you know, but it, it's it's the way of the world now. And if you're not going to adapt with the world, then, you know, you're going to have to find something different to do. Hmm. You know, and, you know, that's what sometimes it's difficult with new salespeople because they don't understand, you know, how the real world works and how people want to be communicated with. You know, a lot of people want to be communicated with through text message or email. They don't want to pick up the phone. Hmm. It's, it's interesting because, you know, one, one of the things if I, if I my, my generation, if I were to come and apply for a job with you, uh, probably my first response would be, you know, how am I going to maintain contact with those clients? I, I say, well, I'll pick up my phone mm -hmm. and I'll give them a call. Yeah. And, and um, but what you're what you're sort of alluding to is not just necessarily the phone call, but also the texting mm -hmm. and the email. Yes. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Yes, there's several different forms of communication now. Huh. You know, even through Facebook, there's Facebook Messenger. You know. Um, you know, um, but, uh, you know, going back to the hiring part, you know, you still want to do everything face-to-face -face on an interview. You know, you don't want to do, you know, hey, yes, it's kind of nice to do a pre-qualifying, you know, over the phone interview, which is nice, but you still want to do that face-to-face -face because you're going to see people's reactions to different questions that you ask them. And that's really when you can get a you know, a judge on somebody. Yeah. And sometimes you make some mistakes hiring the wrong person. Sometimes you. you so what, what do you do when, when you know, let, let's just suppose you hire me mm -hmm. and I don't adapt, you know, after the second week, I'm saying, I'm not going to text anyone. I'm not going to email anyone. You know, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Would would I be immediately dismissed or would no 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 I'm going to you know let you know that you know this is the way we've been doing things for a long time it's a proven way this is how we do things it works you know if you want to try your way for a week and let me know and you know we'll see where where we're at that's so, okay uh, okay well that that's that's good to know uh, in my generation. Um, 
you know, sometimes we would sit before bosses who would say, you do it this way or my way or the highway. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's going to be a learning experience for you because you're going to find out that the way that you want to do business isn't going to work. And once you find that, you're going to come back and say, you know what? You were right. And I'm not going to gloat or anything and say, you know what, I was right. I'm just going to say, well, you know what works. Yeah. Let's yeah. continue to do that. Yeah. And it's going to be a learning experience. Yeah. It's going to be a training experience. Huh, okay. And, you know, what it's also going to do is that you're going to trust me a little bit more and be like, you know what, I guess he does know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, in the, but if you continue to do things the wrong way, yeah, you're probably not going to be employed anymore. Uh, is it, uh, you know, obviously on some of the salespeople, it's on commission. Mm -hmm. And with, you know, e each one of us have our amount of money that we have to bring in each month. Correct. And I would say that if I'm not making the sales, it's not going to be difficult for you to come to me and say, Pat, we'll see you later. No, no, it's not. You know, it is a performance-based business. You know, you either perform or you get out. You know, it, yes, anybody can have a bad week, anybody can have a bad day, everybody, anybody can have a bad month. You know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. You know, there's just there's things out of your control that you can't control, you know. You may not have the correct inventory, you know. You may not have the correct interest rate or something. You know, it can happen. You see, know. see, that's sort of a strange thing. I was always raised with the fact that what have you done for me lately? It's good that last week you made this sale, but what are you doing for me now? Well, you know, you know, I am speaking a little out of both sides of my mouth. You know, that is true. Yeah. You know, um, but in the sales world, it is. You know, okay, great. You had three sales yesterday. Okay, today's Thursday. What are you doing for me today? Okay. You know, so th that is true. You know, but you know, what we try to focus on the whole month. Oh, okay. You know, okay. It, right. It's it's not just one day. One day. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, because, like I said, you can have a bad day just because. You know. I understand. You know, and, and there's no rhyme or reason about it. It just how the cookie's going to crumble. You know, you know the the sales force that that you hire. Um, do you find that? Men or women are the better of the salespeople? No, no, no. It's the person who's driven, who wants, who wants it the most. Oh, okay. Um, you know, the person that's going to grind it out no matter what. You know, uh, you know, that's the person that you want on your sales team. The person that's just going to absolutely go after it and after it and after it and after it, and not stop until they're, you know, just dead tired. And you know what? I got to stop. You know, you want that person that's grinding every day, you know, going after it, you know, wanting more, you know, and not asking for anything. That's that's interesting. You know, in, in working with used cars and new cars, so you sell both new cars and used cars. Yes. And on the new cars and the used cars, uh, I, I, how do you get your used cars? Do you, does someone come in, they sell something, and then, then they buy a new car? And well, um, yeah, there's several different ways. We can either, you know, buy them from an auction, you know, auction, you know, seven, or not seven days a week, but, you know, five days a week. There are some online auctions oh, okay. that we buy from, um, you know, and then people that trade in their car on a new car, people that trade in a used car on a used car. You know, there's, and then there's individuals that, you know, come in and sell us their vehicle. Hmm. And there's several different, you know, avenues of how we acquire inventory. You know, the, our new car inventory is direct from the manufacturer. So, you know, we place our orders and that's what we get from them. Oh, okay. So, so the dealerships, uh, for, for instance, your Chevrolet and you have mentioned some others. Yeah, Buick GMC. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and so they sell directly to you and then, of course, you uh, right. sell them. So, yes. to, so if if I if I have a Chevrolet and I go to a Buick place, I can still sell my Chevrolet to to them. Yeah, why not? Oh, okay, All right. okay. You know, if you have a Chevrolet and they're, a, a, you know, it's a used car. You yeah. Know, so anybody can 
you know, as long as you have a Ohio license, dealer license, you can yeah. sell okay. any used car out there. Okay. Well, you know, it's interesting. My my uh, one car that I drive has about 150,000 miles on it, mm -hmm. but it's only eight years old, seven years. So I would probably get around, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of money yet, right? You know, um, <laughs> Lee Iacocca said it best. <laughs> hey, what is that? If you can't get it out of friends and family here, you won't get it out of. <laughs> that that's true. Eh, well, eh, it's worth a tr worth a try. Yeah, it's 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 worth a try. <laughs> But, you know, I guess what you're saying is when we buy that vehicle, we have to turn around and sell it. And in order to be successful, you have to sell it at either break even or making some money. To be successful, you have to, um, you have to make a profit. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, break even, you know, if we sold all of our vehicles at break even, we wouldn't be in business. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's like I a business. You're right. It is a business. You yeah. know, um, you know, you have to make money. Um, I wish people understood that a little bit more, you know, about the car business that, you know, they feel like they're getting bamboozled sometimes, which they're not. And... Well, you know, you know, cars have risen. The 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 cost of cars. The and cost they, of they, cars have gone up. And they, they said that uh, the tariffs uh, could affect even the the price even more. And the reason being is, each car that we see has maybe sixty seventy percent American. Um, uh, you know, and, and other parts of it is sold. Or is is purchased when they mm -hmm. manufacture a car. Other parts of the the world, yeah, and it, it could range to some of the computer electronics to, um, you know, I don't know the tires or things of that nature, and tariffs could possibly mean more costs. Could it very well could, you know, um, you know the cost of the automobile has you know always increases every year, and here's one of the reasons why. Um, Back in 2017, you know, the federal government stepped in and said, you know what, all cars will have a backup camera in the car. Oh, I didn't know that. All new cars have a backup camera. I didn't know that. After 2017. So, you know, cameras aren't inexpensive, as you know. Right. Um, you know, and, you know, there's a cost of putting that in. You know, there, there has to be a screen and to be able to see. So yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. You know, that's one of the reasons why. You know, costs have gone up because they're making a lot safer car nowadays. You know, I remember in 95 when Ford came out with the airbag and the Ford Taurus and was oh, saving. people, some, yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. You yeah. know, and, you know, it, the airbag is a great thing. Then it went to dual airbags, two airbags in the front yeah. of the car. Yeah. Now, um, in a Chevy Cruze, um, there's 11 airbags. 11 airbags. 11 wow. airbags. Wow. So, you know, that's... You know, in case there's a rollover. So, so when you add that technology and that safety, yeah, there, there's a little bit more money involved. See, see, you as a salesperson are really an educator, aren't you? Wouldn't yes. you say? Yes, we, yeah, are, because, we are an educator. Because each one of us that come into the car dealership or any place, we have our preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. And what, what you as a sales representative really have to do is you have to undo some of the things that may or may not be true. Correct. Uh, and educate us. Yes. 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 I, I, you do have to educate because there's so many things to an automobile now that, you know, even a person like I still don't know about. And I've been in the business for 13 years. Hmm. You know, wow. th there's new things that come out every day that, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to remember. You know, but yeah. you know, in you know, someone that studies these cars, you know, aren't going to remember things as well. Hmm. And it just takes a couple of things to, you know, I could, I'd be more than happy to show you on your car you probably didn't know about, and you've had this car for how long? Eight years, I think. Yeah, something like that. So you know, it, six it's, years. You know, we do have to educate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and if we're not educating, what are we? What are we doing there? Hmm. Well, it, that's very, very true. Y you know, I, it's it's unfortunate that we're, our time is running out because one of the the, uh, the areas of topic I'd, I'd like to talk about is is lease better than purchase it. 
is uh, what, what happens if your credit isn't stellar? What happens with many different things? And so I'd, I'd like for you to come back and talk a little bit about those situations um, where somebody's financial options are, are limited. Mm -hmm. And is it, is it uh, you know, how can they result? Because cars are your second greatest purchase. Correct. Children are first. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, N Nicholas, I, I really appreciate you you coming on and sharing uh, things. You know, one of the things that I wish to stress is you're really not a salesperson. You're an educator, and that uh, when you sit down and you work with with individuals and people, you got to work as a team. Yes. So, any final words of wisdom that you want to share with the uh, viewing audience before we? Well, I didn't know that your car was six years old. So, um, <laughs> if you want to, if you want me to come back on the show and talk about leasing and you know credit and things like that, I'd be more than happy to. But it's going to take a new car sale. <laughs> um, in that regards, uh, Dwayne has a uh, an older car, by the way, and so. You probably need to talk with him. Okay. Well, I guess that's two shows then. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I, I'm Patrick Dangle. I'm uh, talking with Nicholas Dangle. He's the general manager of the Glockter Chevrolet Corp. Uh, I, I appreciate him coming on, and we'll, we'll see Nicholas very soon.